Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about the Blur event in JavaScript. So basically the Blur event is mostly founded when using input fields. Um, basically what it means is that the event will fire off whenever an input field loses focus. So for example, we have an input field right here called nickname. If I was to select it, so get it in focus right now, if I click out of it, it is now out of focus, so it's been blurred. So the blur event will fire off whenever I click out of this input field. So let's see how this thing works in practice. All right, inside my text editor here, I've got the HTML for that web page. Um, we have an input field of type text with an ID of my input, so my IMP. Inside the JavaScript, we can start to, um, to use the blur event by first getting a reference to the actual input field itself. So let's make a new constant and we're going to call this one my INP, which is equal to document.getElement by ID and pass in the ID my input right there. So now we have this input field inside the JavaScript. So now we can begin to add an event listener to the input field for the blur event. So down here, let's type out my INP dot add event listener we're going to add the blur event to that um, input field all right as the callback function we're going to accept a single argument that being e short for the actual event itself all right inside the function body we can simply begin by logging out the actual event object so let's just say console.log e and this will give us a lot of information relevant to the event that just occurred. Okay, that was to save this one and refresh the browser. And then, alrighty, let's see what's happening here. Line 12. Okay. Ah, okay. Equals and greater than sign. Alright, save that again and refresh the page. Okay, so now inside this input field, I'm going to just simply get out of it. If I was to click out of the input field, we see we get this focus event logged out to the console. If I was to expand this, we get information regarding the actual event, that blur event right there. And now we actually have access to something called the target property, which refers to the input field itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the value of the input field and then display an error message if that that value contains the string decode. So back inside the code, inside here, let's first get a reference to the actual value inside the um, input field. So let's make a new constant and call this one um, val, which is equal to e, so that event object, dot target, referring to the input field right there, and then say dot value. So technically, this right here is the same as saying my INP dot value because the target is going to be the input field. But this is more of a universal solution um, for the function right here itself. So let's just go down here and we'll start by console.log the val. Okay, let's save this and refresh the page. If I was to type in something like Dominic and get out of it, we see Dominic in the console. So we get the actual value of the input field. Okay, so now let's uh, create a regular expression to actually match against. So let's make a new const and call this one re, short for regular expression, equal to a regular expression, decode and not case sensitive. So this will match if the string contains the phrase decode in uppercase or lowercase. So now using the string match method, we can test for this. So down here, let's say if the val dot match, so if it matches the regular expression, pass it in right there. If that is true, we're going to alert a message and say um, the value cannot contain decode. Okay, so now let's just get rid of that right there and test this out. I'll save this and refresh the browser once again. I'm going to type in something like Dominic and blur it and we see nothing happens. If I type out um, 
uh, Dominic loves decode, for example, and get out of it, this time we see the value cannot contain decode. So we are triggering the blur event by getting out of the input fields, then checking against the actual value, and if it contains decode, then uh, just load a message and say the value cannot contain a decode. All right, so that is how you can use the blur event in JavaScript. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.